What is up everybody, it is Life's Apprentice. Today we're gonna to be teaching you guys how to roof a house. And uh, nice little example of a house right here. A ranch, about 15 squares. Pretty simple, but we're gonna go step by step and show you guys exactly how to tear off and re-roof a house. First thing you need is a roofing shovel, tear off shovel. Um, there's many varieties. You can see the teeth right here are made for pulling nails. And you can get some variety of this at any of your uh, Home Depots, Lowe's, Menards, that kind of stuff. And this is what we use to tear off the shingles and pull the nails. So we're going to start on the ridge, pull the ridge off, and then today it's raining. It's hard to tell, but it's definitely raining. Um, supposed to be done, but we'll see. It's raining real light. We're going to tear off this back side here, try to get this prepped. We got all the shingles torn off and we're down to the tar paper. Um, you can tear off the tar paper if you want as you go. Uh, I don't like to do that because if it's windy, it uh, little pieces blow all over the place. And like today we were getting a, a mist and even though there is some holes, leaving the tar paper on will give you some protection in the meantime. But the next step, we gotta pull all the nails. So any nails that didn't come out with the shingles, you're going to want to pull, you can use the, the ripper or a hammer, pry bar, and pull all the nails. You can pound all the nails through, um, but it makes it harder to peel up the tar paper. So that's your next step. All right, you see there, we got all the nails pulled. I'm sure we missed a couple, you always will. Like right there's a couple that we missed. That's okay. Then we just rolled up the tar paper, got that off. And then um, there's a couple rotten spots that we need to repair. Like one right there. So we're gonna pull up the sheets that need to be replaced. And then we need to look for spots like this on the edge, this plywood's fine, but these need to be re-nailed. And uh, we're gonna get the framing gun out and uh, put some nails in. A lot of these seams are like that. Not all of them, but a lot of them you can see. A little bit loose. Don't you! Catch. Cat like. What a screw. <laughs> professional job there. Professional editing, really. Yeah. What'd you say? Half inch? This is half inch? It's 7 16 I don't know if the other stuff's 3 8 or what it is. It's pretty goddamn close. Yeah. yeah. Usually you don't put less than 7 16 on, but... It might be 7 this stuff Those also, are, these are half inch clips. Well, that's not what it is. We need the plywood shrinker. I'm getting it. <laughs> Come on. Alright, now I gotta pull it back up with the mage clips in there. Alright, what needs to be nailed now here? Look 
the bar. Some. Some of them. Just a couple of them. All right, so we're done tearing off. We have all the tar paper off. We pulled all the nails. Um, we know that our sheeting is all good. Any of the loose parts of the sheeting we've nailed. The next part is going to be our ice and water shield and our tar paper. So we're gonna start with ice and water shield here. Um, we're gonna do two rows. That's code in our area for ice and water shield. We have to go three feet past the inside wall. Um, of the house or outside wall of the house um, So we're gonna do two rows and then uh, One thing that's kind of controversial in roofing is Does the ice and water shield go on before or after the gutter apron? Now, I, I don't think there's really a wrong way to do it But in my opinion the right way to do it is to go over the gutter apron the reason for this is is this little section when we go over won't have ice and water shield on it but if we put the ice and water shield on underneath the uh the gutter apron and then put the gutter apron over the top if water gets behind there in theory the water would go down behind the edge and what it's going to do is get behind your fascia and rot out your fascia board so it's my belief that with ice and water shield and it's just basic simple water flow that the ice and water shield goes over the edge that way if and when water gets underneath the shingles and onto the ice and water shield it will go over the edge and into the gutter like it's designed so that's what we're going to do um, now there's lots of ways to do ice and water shield um, it's not super hot it's like 70 degrees right now and uh, it's not super sunny but this stuff can be a pain in the butt to install so what I do is I take the roll and there's two plastic parts and I get it into position like this um, I'm gonna hold it about a half of an inch up on the edge and then we're just gonna staple we're just gonna put uh, like six staples in one corner and we're gonna take the paper and we're just gonna roll this out now on a really hot day this stuff will stick very very fast so you got to be careful um, I'm gonna roll it out about 10 feet and you can see it's already sticking I'm gonna straighten it out then we're gonna go through and staple it and you can staple I guess as much or as little as you want um, we're gonna shingle this right away so we're not worried about wind taking it but if you're doing it overnight you're definitely gonna want to um, staple it pretty well in theory you're supposed to peel this And this is just your lap seam. Um, we're gonna run another row of ice and water over the top of it. And uh, that'll be it for the ice and water. Now one thing you gotta be really careful of, and one thing that I stress on all my jobs, is that we run the paper extremely straight. And the reason for that is, is because when I'm shingling, I very, very rarely snap lines. I use my tar paper and my ice and water shield to keep my shingles straight. I'll kind of explain that. Now with the ice and water shield, at least this kind, we don't have any lines on it other than the seams. Um, but on the paper, I'll show you what I mean and why it's important to keep it straight. We also really want to try to avoid any wrinkles, especially in the ice and water shield, because it'll actually show through on your shingles.
All right, the next part is our synthetic felt. And that's what we have here. There's many different varieties of it. Um, you can use 15 pound and 30 pound felt. Really most professional roofers aren't using that anymore. Um, this stuff comes in a 10 square roll and it's lighter, it's wider, it's all around better. And uh, this is pretty much what most roofers are using nowadays. Now again, we're making very, very carefully and being very sure that we're staying straight with our rows. We're making sure that we're staying straight with our rows because all of these little dots and all of these lines and all of these letters are straight. So we can actually run our shingles um, and know that we're staying straight, at least to the tar paper at this point, um, based on the lines and the lettering on the um, tar paper. And when we get to the top, I'll show you, we have bundles up there now, so it'll be a little bit. We'll have to wait for our last row, but when we get to the top, I'll show you how I guarantee that I'm straight every single time when it, my shingles get to the ridge. Well, now we've done, I guess really this pretty simple part. We've torn it off. We've made sure our plywood's good. We've got it weatherproofed with our ice and water shield and our uh, synthetic tar paper. The next thing we're gonna do, um, we didn't happen to do gutter apron on this job, but gutter apron is gonna go on a lot like the D-Edge. This is D-Edge here. Um, this is pretty standard, pretty standard stuff. This is your standard roof edge. Now this is gonna go on over the top of the paper. Um, that's the way that it's designed and supposed to be. Um, we're lucky on this bottom end down here by the gutter it butts perfectly into the gutter and we don't have to cut it now if you have a, a steeper pitch or you don't have a gutter you may have to do some trimming and angle the bottom of that piece so that it uh, lines up down there um, and then you can see these two little beads right here we want to nail right in between those and what these are designed to do is if water gets in here, it ideally hits that little rib and runs down. So we're gonna nail this. You can nail this as much or as little as you want. Um, I would recommend you nail it about every foot to 16 inches. And we're gonna nail this piece, pulling it tight to the fascia. And we're just gonna nail that. And then we'll have to add a piece up here to meet with the peak. Uh, make sure that you're overlapping um, the piece. Now, shingling. This is the part, as a professional roofer, everyone gets this wrong, except for professional roofers. It's very rare that a do-it-yourselfer does this right. Um, first things first, we have our starter shingle. And what this I'll show you in a second, but what this is designed to do is to hold down the bottom uh, shingle, basically. So we're gonna run this. I'm giving it a little bit of an overlap. So I'm holding it over the gutter apron here, about three eighths of an inch. We're gonna nail on the end. And we're gonna go about every foot, we're gonna have a nail. And the reason why we do that is because we're going to have a seam here and we do not want a nail to be anywhere near this seam. Now, if you're four nailing, five nailing, six nailing, the idea is the same. So one mistake I see a lot of guys do is they'll use starter shingle and they'll start their first course of shingle like that. Well, here you have your keyway and this starter shingle is basically useless if you do it that way. So we want to hold this back six inches. We want every offset to be six inches. And we're going to nail in the tar line, in the uh, common bond. Here, we're going to skip a foot. And you can kind of see my nail placement there. Then our next shingle will go here. So seeing as you can pre-cut these, I don't. Um, I cut mine straight with the edge. A lot of guys put 
starter on the edge, I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. Um, that's why you have D-edge. D-edge sticks over a half of an inch or three-eighths of an inch from the edge. And people say that you need starter and you hang it another three-eighths or whatever over the edge. I think that's the dumbest thing in the world. But who am I? I'm just a roofer. I don't use, I don't use gable starter. Just me. You guys can do it if you want. I think it's a scam. Trying to get more money out of us. So, six inches. Um, this knife is about seven inches. You can use your knife, you can space it. You want it roughly six, six inches. Um, that's about six inches. You can have seven, you could do five. Your nail placement is super key. We do not want a nail anywhere near this seam. So when we nail, we're always on the leading edge, gonna have one about an inch from the end. We're gonna skip about a foot. And over here, you can put as many nails and space them basically wherever you want because that next shingle is gonna cover it and come to about right here. So there we have our 12 inch piece. I'll show you how I use those. If you have nice straight cuts and you're cutting on this D edge, your straight should be pretty, your cut should be pretty straight. Nail that one on the edge, go over about a foot. And then we don't want to nail too close to this edge because it'll actually show, come through the gutter apron there, or the D edge. So if you do this right, I've been doing this a long time, so I've got pretty good at it. And these pieces, no waste. These are my next guys. We're just gonna keep on going just like that. And that's your first start to the stair step. Now, we're gonna get into full shingles. We want to nail our starter just like a shingle. And every one of these shingles now, full shingles, is going to be nailed the exact same. Like I said, you guys can five, six nail, four nail, you guys can do however you want. If you have any questions, what your manufacturer wants and what you should do, read the bundle. It's as simple as reading the bundle. The bundle tells you exactly what you should do. We're just butting these up. And every one of these is the same. At least the full ones. Another thing that's really, really important, and I, I run into it all the time, is over-pressured and under-pressured nails. Let me see that quick. I'm gonna show you, this is perfect. See how it didn't break the mat on the shingle? All of these. You also want to avoid nailing when the gun is not flat. Um, the gun needs to be like this. Now I'm going to show you, you can adjust the standoff on a boss ditch, and I'm sure other nail guns. So now I have this set where it's going to blow through the shingle ideally, and I'm going to show you. Watch. I'll see how that blew through the mat and actually broke it. Look at how easy that pulls out, okay? We do not want that. We also... Do not want, I don't know if I can even do it. Basically, we don't want those sticking out. This one is not quite flush. Um, 
that's gonna eventually wear through the shingle the shingle above here it's gonna wear through the shingle or it's gonna not allow this shingle that goes over here to properly tar down and seal down this is one of the biggest mistakes I see people make um, even professionals um, I see it all the time and shingles blow off because if these nails are not placed right and properly um, nailed I guess you're gonna lose all your power to hold the shingle the other thing I see a lot is high nails okay um, there's a common bond in a shingle a laminated shingle architectural shingle there's actually two layers so there's a common bond right here and it's about on Atlas they actually have an improved common bond it's about an inch and a half so on a steeper roof if you do not get into this common bond these will end up sliding out on you the other thing when you're going through the common bond is you're going through the top of this lower shingle so if you're putting four nails you're actually getting eight if you're putting five you're actually getting ten if you're doing six you're actually getting twelve per shingle so it's going through the common bond and it is getting the top of this shingle it's very very important that these the pressure is right the spacing is right and the height you need to be nailing in this nailing zone um, a lot of shingles nowadays have very obvious nailing zones um, this being one of them you can obviously see you want to nail in this inch and a half tar strip right here very very important now we've gotten our first I guess um, run I call it a stair step but you can call it whatever you want and now we're back where we have our six inch piece here and a full one now we can start with a full shingle and again being very mindful that we do not have a nail anywhere near this keyway here so then this first one we're going to do five nails just like that oh i forgot to adjust my pressure it's the best hammer i've ever bought and we're just going to continue that process okay we're going to give a six inch we're going to hang six inches off on that side and we're gonna do the same thing until we reach the peak. Maintaining roughly a six inch offset the entire way, all the way up. So this should be six inches on every single one. When you run out of room, you go back to the bottom, start over. Once you reach the peak, then you just start running. Now, this is where I'm saying, if you guys wanna snap lines, you can. I run everything off of the tar paper so when I get I really if you're not experienced at this and if you're doing three tabs if you're shingling with three tabs this is a lot harder but when I get up into here I'm mindful as I go every single course or several courses that I'm staying straight if I get a little bit crooked down here, it's not that big of a deal. Where you're really gonna notice that you're crooked is at the ridge. So we wanna make sure when we get to the ridge, 100% that we are straight. Um, you'll be able to see, like this course, for example. I know that I have just a little bit of these bullseyes showing. I'm gonna keep that in mind as I run all the way across the roof. I'm going to take several mental notes in certain spots. This may be one of them. Um, and then on the top of this row of, of paper, I'll take another mental note. And I know that, you know, every six rows, I have something that I know is going to maintain um, and stay straight. So even this one, see, I'm at the bottom of these bullseyes. And there's so many things that you can follow on this paper. Like I said, now you know you're in the middle of the B and the H and the E. Um, it's pretty simple to know. It's 
not all lines, but these letters are all um, essentially lines. That's basically it. We're going to continue that all the way across um, and roof this some gun. Well, you guys got to see a time lapse of us uh, shingling there and when you're finishing off your ends it's pretty much the same you know you're gonna run a full shingle cut it flush with the edge um, the one thing I was talking about with the tar paper is I always peak my tar paper so like this row for example we ran the very top edge up to the peak on this one we ran this black line all the way across the peak and what that's going to allow you to do when you're shingling is if your tar paper below this top row gets a little bit squirrely um, and your shingles maybe aren't perfectly straight, when you get to this point, you know 100% that the tar paper is straight to the ridge up here. Um, so if your shingles are following this paper, even if your shingles may or may not be crooked, they're going to end up straight on the ridge and you can kind of see here um, I have about a two inch gap here and if you look down I got about a two inch gap there's a little bit of a wave right there um, but we'll be able to take all that out as we go up to the top now as far as the boots like this the install of the boot and our pod vents the ridge shingles all that kind of stuff um, I have videos on my channel about all of that kind of stuff. So go and check those out if you're interested in that. Um, as far as doing valleys and ridge vent and all sorts of stuff like that, I have a video for it. Um, so I hope you guys like this video. That's the end. Um, check out these videos over here or this video up here, my roofing playlist over here. Subscribe if you haven't hit the like button if I helped you out and I will see you on the next one.